So I lived in a Zen Buddhist monastery for a year, and uh, there's parts of Zen that are really not like you're, you know, trimming a bonsai tree or, um, you know, raking a garden peacefully. There's another part of Zen where the teacher told me, you know, we have to take full responsibility for our lives, you know. Um, even if somebody does something that's completely out of our control, that's bad for us, um, that even causes us harm, in a way, what he was saying is that we're actually still responsible for that because we're responsible for our reaction. Um, if we have something bad happen to us and we allow ourselves to be consumed by it and suffer by it for years on end, well, that's on us, you know. Yes, the bad thing happened to us and that was out of our control, but how we re react for years on end is, is in our control. So that brings me to this topic um, that I think I kind of hear Dan Dan the fireman talking about, which is basically we just have to take responsibility when we're riding our motorcycle for everything that's happening around us. And what that really means is cars just don't see motorcyclists, you know, and when I started riding a motorcycle and I got back in my car and started riding around in my car, uh, I would realize, wow, I just don't see motorcyclists, you know, like there's not really, we're never going to be able to get cars to see motorcycles, you know, it's just not going to happen, you know, um, you know, so we have to go back to, you know, human psychology. Um, and Dan, Dan, the fireman talks about this a lot. So first of all, we need to have lights on, you know, we probably want to wear, I don't know, I wear a white helmet, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be high vis, but that's probably good. But, you know, like he says, um, I, I guess he's, his point is that lights are something that just by human nature, we're drawn to look for. Um, and, but the main thing is that when a road is 35 miles an hour, and if I'm going 55 on my motorcycle, you know, a car that's merging into traffic, whether they're taking um, their left or they're taking a right out of a street, um, you know, into my lane, you know, but if I'm going 55 and they they just don't see me way back there and they can't imagine I'm going that fast because I'm speeding, right? So they could be making that turn with plenty of time for me to, you know, accommodate them um, if I was going 35 or even 40, you know, but when we start doing like 55 and 60 and a 35, they just, you know, are going to pull into our lane. And, and so I see, you know, as Dan points out in his videos, you know, you see like these motorcyclists doing rev bombing and like, you know, um, honking their horn and stuff. And it's like, give me a break. You know, that car is, you know, if you're speeding on your motorcycle, it is really like on you, you know? So then, you know, one gets to the question of, well, what about like, if you are going the speed limit and in Tucson, it's very deadly with cars taking a left, crossing all the way through our lane, you know, to head, let's say head South and we're heading, um, East, uh, you know, so they're going to cross into us. Um, you know, well, Again, you know, if we're going to just take responsibility for all aspects of our motorcycle riding, you know, then those are very dangerous things for us. So basically at that point, your option is, well, not to ride a motorcycle, right? Well, okay, so I'm going to ride a motorcycle. So then maybe I actually want to slow down and go 30 at that intersection. Or, you know, maybe like I see other riders do, maybe I want to weave back and forth or, you know, turn my high beams on and off and just kind of like, make it freaking obvious because, you know, um, like I said, cars, they just don't see us, you know, and we're not going to change that by rev bombing them and honking and stuff like that and getting mad, you know, um, it's just part of the, the deal, you know, um, of riding a motorcycle, uh, especially in Tucson, because I swear people drive here, they don't even know the traffic laws for even operating a car, you know, so now you're asking them to, you know, keep an eye out for motorcycles. Well, you know, pedestrians are getting killed left and right, you know, in this town. So, uh, you know, better to just take full responsibility. So, you know, basically I just don't speed when I'm driving through city streets in Tucson, you know, that's the first thing. Um, and you know, I drive with my lights on, you know, I wear a white helmet. I mean, this stuff isn't honestly, it's not really going to make much of a difference. You know, I do turn my high beams on and off. I, I kind of like, will just turn them on if I'm coming to, um, you know, a crazy intersection like in Tucson, 22nd Street, where the freeway on-ramps are, 
you know, um, I don't flash it. I just turn it on and off because a change of a light will probably make an impact, you know. But at the end of the day, my whole point with this is that, you know, we have to just take radical responsibility. When we're riding a motorcycle, you know, cars aren't going to see us. They're going to do things that are dangerous to us. You know, but if we're responsible for that, that means we are able to respond to what crazy cars are doing. So for that, I think you just have to slow down, you know, uh, that's the first thing. And just, you know, um, and that's about it. You know, I really don't see a point in getting mad and, and trying to like teach cars a lesson. Like, you know, um, I don't, nobody's really going to care about us on a motorcycle. It's up to us to, you know, respond and react. Um, so I've been thinking about this for a while. I just wanted to share that. And um, props to Dan Dan the Fireman, uh, fellow Tucsonan. Thanks, man. Bye.